as I mentioned, if you go to n5d.com, type in Mandela. You don't, don't even have to type in the whole thing. Just Mandela in the search bar. You'll find Mandela Effect articles. But there's new ones that at least I wasn't aware of. And we'll see if you guys are aware of these ones too. You know, in school, you know, some of those that are old enough, we had to put our hand across the heart and say, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Where was your heart? It was over here, right? It's on your, the left side of your body, right? Apparently not anymore. It moved. This is Mandela effect number one. This is, they're saying now the, your heart's in the center of your body. It's not on the left-hand side. What the fuck? <laughs> when did this happen? What the fuck? Or is it possible that it was like that the whole time and we, we only thought it was there? But then again, why would we take our right hand and place it over the left side of our body over our where we thought our heart was? What do you guys think? Do you guys remember your heart being on your left hand side or has it always been in the center? First one weighing in is Judy on the left. You got that right. Got that left. <laughs> yeah. Remember pledging allegiance to the flag in school? You know, you'd have to put it over, over your heart on the left hand side of your body. We never did this. Nobody showed us to put our our hand over the center of our chest to pledge allegiance. I mean, even when you put your hand there, you can feel the heart beating, not necessarily in the center as much. Yeah, I always thought it was on the left. I had open heart surgery, quadruple bypass. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it's over here. <laughs> Crazy. Cray cray. That's Mandela effect number one. And I hadn't heard of that up until recently. So new Mandela effects are popping up. And let's check out another one. Now you gotta kind of be familiar with cars. Apparently the Volvo on the right that has the male symbol is the correct one. I don't remember that arrow ever being there on Volvo. Does anyone remember this arrow? Of course, I've never owned a Volvo. My parents have never owned it, but I've seen commercials. I had friends who have had Volvos. I don't remember ever seeing this arrow here. Yeah, crazy. Is that something that you guys ever, do you recall seeing that? An arrow? Well, it's, just, it's the sign of the, the male sign, right? Yeah, Morejo. I don't remember it. Neither, neither, neither do either. Neither do either. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially now in the times of wokeness and all, you know, and equal rights and everything that would turn women off if a Volvo is a male sex symbol. Yeah. Susie says the one on the left looks correct. When did all this shit happen without us knowing? I don't know. Were we meditating and all of a sudden we popped into a different reality? Where all of a sudden our heart's in the center? Mine isn't. Mine's still over here. <laughs> the last one. And I'm sure there's a lot more, but I, these were the three that stood out the most to me and if I know you guys a lot of you guys a lot of us are around the same age group we're in, in that same Pluto and Virgo generation or Pluto and Libra generation you know relatively close to each other you know and we remember stuff or apparently not <laughs> or maybe we remember differently this is the last one and it's of uh, Richard Simmons. They said that he never wore a headband. And you can go back and look at all the videos. There's not one. You will not find one video where he's wearing a headband. 
Not one. I could have swore he had like some glitter or maybe stars and stripes or something like that for his headband, but not one. Did Richard Simmons wear a headband at all, ever? Apparently not. <laughs> Judy says, I can picture him in a blue sweatband closer to his eyebrows, right? Mario, I just Googled 1985 Volvos and the emblem is the male symbol. Wow. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't give much heads up. I was doing a lot of, I planned on giving a heads up like an hour and a half beforehand, but I was doing like last minute research and editing on photos and everything. And I, it, I only gave people like a 15 minute heads up. Then I made a post on Facebook as well as Rumble and Twitter, Truth Social for a, a short heads up, but yeah, sorry about that. Susie says, same thing. I remember the headband. Dana says, yeah, we remember he wore one. Yep. Yeah, I thought it was like some glittery kind. Or, you know, like stars, so maybe stars and stripes, like a, Captain America kind of headband or something. And perhaps closer to the the eyebrows, right? Crazy. Mandela effects. To me, the Mandela effect are timelines converging until we get to the most optimal timeline. And these are all relatively similar dimensions, almost identical to the one we're in right now, but little things change like the headband or the Volvo logo, right? Where the heart's located, little things are changing as reality changes right before our eyes. So if we're converging into the best timeline for humanity, I guess it doesn't matter if some of these things are different in this reality, as long as we're moving forward and going ahead. So what, what if like Dolores Cannon, what she said, what if that happens where you have these two earths separating, right? So see the one will not be aware of the other. And that's what they mean by those left behind will not even be aware that anything has happened. The old earth is still there, vibrating at this lower frequency with all these terrible things happening to it. But the other earth moves into the new dimensions, vibrating so fast it becomes invisible. So they are not aware anything has ever happened. Maybe we're still, we're all still on this one earth of the convergence, right? But maybe when we wake up, Things go back to normal. Boy, that'd be a head game, wouldn't it? All of a sudden you woke up, you're in this new earth. There's no dark forces anymore. All of a sudden your heart is back here. <laughs> Richard Simmons is wearing his headband. Dolores Cannon also spoke about how every decision we make creates new parallel realities. We all come to crossroads in our lives, don't we? We all come to points when we could go one direction or the other direction. And no matter which way we chose to go, our lives would be totally different, wouldn't they? You put energy into each decision. What happens to the other decision that you did not choose to focus on? It becomes a reality also you have created the other possibility with your mind. In that other reality, another you is living out the other decision. Every time you make a decision of any kind, whether to stay home from work or go to work, whether to take the car or not take the car, 
whether to cross the street or not cross the street. Every time you make a decision, it splits again. And another you is acting out the other one. And so finally, there's an infinite number of realities all occurring at the same time. They existing at the same time, they said. And it's only real for you, the one you're focused on at the present time. A lot of people try to convince us that they're, they're false memories. Like Jif and Jiffy. I get that one, you know. How it was never, because Jiffy was a, a false memory of combining Jif and Skippy. I can understand that one. I don't remember a Jiffy when I was a kid, but I could see people understanding that there may have been something like that. And the way, you know, Fruit Loops was spelled, the, what is that thing, a cornucopia thing on Fruit of the Loom, their, their logo. Um, yeah, and like Judy said, Jiffy popcorn, right? So yeah, there was a Jiffy, but it just wasn't the peanut butter. <laughs> I think he had glittery star glasses. Maybe he did. I don't remember that though. The effects are just insane, says Marejo, when people like me who have concentrated on having a good memory, no joke, it's terrible. I get it. I get it. Hey, you may be thinking of Elton John. Well, that's probably true too. I remember Richard Simmons always wearing a terry towel headband in the exercise classes. It's like this, if you go on YouTube and type in parrot, what the fuck? You have these parrots all going, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> That's what I feel like, what the fuck? What do you guys think, though? Do you think that it's possible that we're converging into the ultimate timeline? Or do you think there's something nefarious going on? Do you think Harp and CERN might have something to do with changing the timelines, putting us into a, a negative timeline? I'm not feeling that myself, but I'm curious what you guys think. I think they're trying to do everything they can do to prevent what's going to happen for us and to them which are two totally different things. Now, some people beg to differ. They say that, you know, everybody moves on to the next stage of spiritual progression together. I don't think so. It's like what Dolores Cannon said. You need to be at least 51% positive to go to the new earth. I believe the law of one also says something about the 51%. And if you go to N5D, I wrote an article about that. Just type in, once again, on the search bar, 51%. That's it. You'll find it. I think I'm going to re-release a lot of uh, the articles that I have on N5D. I, I was looking at how many articles I actually have. It's like 5,500, 5,700 articles. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, I've been doing this obviously a long time on N5D, uh, since 2009, so 15 years of publishing articles and videos and I'm a seasoned veteran. <laughs> Judy says Richard Bach wrote a book called One where he explored timeline splitting with every decision you make, part of you goes left and Part of you goes right and your timeline has split. Dolores Cannon said the same thing. She said, when you wake up and like today, I chose this third eye chakra shirt, but I was thinking maybe I'll, I'll go with the be beautiful one. Maybe I'll, I'll go with the earth element shirt. Maybe I'll wear a tank top, but each one of those creates a different reality. All the possibilities are infinitely available. It's kind of how the law of attraction works too. So what you set your sights on, you bring into you from the universe. And that's where a lot of us get fucked over because there's so much shit going on around us that it's hard to keep and remain focused on that goal, on that end goal. 
and of course they're doing this intentionally you know and, and a lot of this stuff is just plain out fear-mongering i have this one meme i was going to post and i hope i saved it it says remember patriots you're watching a movie the alliance is in control all of the scare tactics like what i was just talking about such as 15 minute cities lockdowns eating bugs mandatory vaccines cbdc's central bank currencies right social credit scores genocide mrna i shouldn't have said that on youtube in food and all the negative things you are hearing and seeing planned for humans will not happen the light beings are protecting humanity the air plants animals food supply water and ground are being cleansed at the point of humanity's doom the light beings and the alliance will flip the switch have no fear please relax everything will be okay this is all happening to wake up humanity this evil that is being shown to you is what would have happened if the light beings and the alliance had not stepped in this is being allowed to happen so that in the future, if this evil begins to reemerge, humanity will be awake and not allow it to happen. There will be no nuclear war and no World War III. All nukes have been disarmed. For the most part, I believe that. Yeah, I agree. I need to post that on Facebook and Telegram. If you haven't joined me on Telegram, what are you waiting for? Because, yeah, I get to, I post a lot of stuff there that I can't post elsewhere and I can't even talk about elsewhere. I'll put a, that link in the chat again. So, definitely join me on Telegram. A lot of good stuff there.